Yep. It's time to talk about that vaccine. Here we go. What's up, everybody? This is me, Jamika, aka Free to Be, aka Blue Sky. And welcome to Belly Also Pregnant, where we talk about all things maternity. So today I want to talk about the COVID-19 vaccine that everybody is talking about. And I want to talk about towards the pregnant women. Um, but hold on masculines, don't go anywhere because this is for you too. Because of course, they say, they say COVID has no gender, no name no type. So listen, to be vaccinated or not, that is the question. Vaccinated blood. Well, here we go. So the coronavirus in other countries hit earlier, of course, the United States got it last. And because of everything that's been going on, I don't need to fill you in. Um, they have rushed to get the vaccine going out. And normally a vaccine takes a while to prepare, usually a good vaccine, maybe two years. That way you get all your studies in, et cetera, et cetera. You can test, you can see what happens. You know, you got time, you're going through four seasons, actually eight seasons, which is good. Um, but still and yet, there is, you know, some things to think about let's put it like that so the first, so the first thing is the Pfizer vaccine as we all know has been approved by the FDA so based on history I know that the FDA has approved things that are not necessarily healthy to humans or animals or plants or fish or you know anything else you could think of. Um, some things that FDA has been approved of and has caused problems. The next one is called, actually, one of the drugs that the FDA approved, I believe it was just a couple of years ago, um, where it was a drug called Naproxen, if I'm not mistaken, and it deals with hallucinations and delusions that people with Alzheimer's have. And come to find out if you take, it was FDA approved, let's get that out the way. Come to find out if you take that drug, your 36 to 37% chance of dying increases based on heart attacks, heart failures, all kind of stuff. So that was FDA approved though. And they had to find out after the fact that all this would happen based on this medication. Another medication that was FDA approved um, recently, in a couple years ago, was Euloric. Euloric deals with gout, and come to find out, FDA approved that also the same percentage, around 36% of people, was um, due to have an increase in having heart failure, heart attacks, and other um, causes that wouldn't happen, besides death, um, <laughs> if they haven't taken that drug. So that leads me to the point of, okay, so it's FDA approved. Woo, 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 it's safe, it's safe. If you just look at the history of it all, the track record is really not that good, especially when it's promoted as being safe and you are trusting in the fact that um, a group of people is saying that this is safe. Everybody's talking about now um, what's in the vaccine, or at least if they're not talking about it, it would be bringing more noise to what is in it, what is in it, because especially in these times, and especially during the internet, Wi-Fi, thank goodness, people are starting to get information. Now, the tricky part is what is real, what is fake. We already been through that. I'm not going to go and stress you guys out about fake news and all that. Let's just move on. <laughs> but <laughs> the vaccine the vaccine in itself um, has, or just not just the COVID-19 vaccine, but any vaccines could have ingredients in it 
that you may or may not be allergic to, may be um, harmful to your health, uh, whether it is in the short term run or you won't find the effects until after, or even in utero, if you take a vaccine, um, the mom, of course, that maybe the baby will have outcomes. So we don't know. But with this COVID-19, what we do know because history is showing us. But as far as this COVID-19, there's um, not enough information um, given out, which is a point that I want to bring. Pharmaceutical companies, they need to be for real, for real, for real. Everything in a vaccine is like looking at the ingredients when you go to the grocery store and you found out certain things, you know, that you read about and you read in the packages now and you're spending like 20 minutes in one aisle and people looking at you and you're looking things up on your phone. And what is this? That's what vaccines are. They're ingredients. It's a paragraph of ingredients that may not be suitable for everybody. It's billions of people in this world yeah so not everything is going to fit everybody not everything is going to match everybody not one size fits all you know when it comes to an injection something going inside of your body and you know making up some changes in your body that your body did not ask for <laughs> you know what i mean um so there is scientists out there who are not getting funded and because of that they have a small voice you know meaning that their voices are not being raised up you know it's kind of like on the down low where you have to look for them but those who are being funded you know of course their voice is loud they're on the news all the time they're after blah, 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 blah. But those scientists that are looking at all this on the sideline and doctors and people who are in the medical industry have questions still. You know, how does it affect, you know, AIDS patients, cancer patients, um, patients that um, have weakened immune systems already, yada, 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 yada. Are we making this thing worse or what are we doing here? You know, just like the pregnancy thing, you know, what, what are we concluding here? There's nothing out yet. What, what, okay. You know, because once again, one size does not fit all. Um, so until the companies are honest, that's the only way that people can start making more logical decisions, more decisions that conform to what they know is true for themselves and also for their children. Not based on, oh, this is the information, this is all we've given you, just trust us. It's too many people on this earth to have all power and to a few people who don't really represent and who may not have the same ailments and issues as other people. So that's something to consider as well is, is everything being listed? And if not, then there needs to be something saying that Everything has to be listened. This is just not for the COVID. This is for all of the vaccines. So Pfizer, I know, has put out a list, but there is information saying that, okay, well, there's some more ingredients in here, other scientists, and this is just not it. So I'm curious to see, you know, what's going to happen, how is it going to change, if more ingredients are going to be added, different ones, et cetera. Um, so... With the COVID vaccine, it will be um, SARS COVID um, vaccine that they will give you. And it's actually a weakened version of the virus. Um, also, some stuff that might be in there is um, egg protein. So basically, um, from drawn from the fetus, which is the yellow part of the egg, to add in to the vaccine as a source of protein um, because it's just not the vaccine. It's usually like you read ingredients in the back of your, your food. That's how vaccines are. It's like this, 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 this. Um, so that's something to be mindful for if you're allergic to eggs, egg yolk, egg whites, because a lot of vaccines do have either one or both um, in them. Um, now the COVID vaccine will come with a weakened version of the virus so it's not a dead um version of it which some vaccines do have 
dead versions of that virus that's injected into you. But this particular one is a weak one. So you might say, okay, what's the difference between weak and just like gun ho? Well, usually when a virus attacks, as they say, it'll duplicate like a thousand times more, like fast, like action quick, like fire, you know? Um, but, or air. But um, with a weakened strain of any virus, they're saying it will replicate like 20 times. So if you want to weigh the balance, it's like oh, a, th a thousand times over or just 20 times, you know. So that's the difference between the weekend. So the fact, the bottom line is, is it's still alive though, okay. Uh, we all seen um, cats, birds, dogs, fish, frogs, I don't know, but any kind of animal that you can think of that was weakened that was sick you almost thought it was dead <laughs> right and you all crying and you all carrying it on and whatnot and everything is just like oh my gosh the bird the frog the fish but then at some point they gain life and you're like oh my goodness i was up here planning a funeral i'm thinking you know it's on its way out I'm trying to prepare my kids emotionally for what's about to happen, making up stories, you know, about heaven, by flushing something down the toilet, or whatever, whatever. So the point is, is that it's still in there. And it is suggested for pregnant women not to take any vaccinations that have live viruses in them. Some, of, Some of the vaccines that are not safe for moms because they have live uh, virus in them is like MMR, HPV, some of the influenza um, vaccines out there, yellow fever is to name a few. So the COVID-19 has a live virus in it. They might say it's weakened, but it still exists. And there's still, as they say, it's 20 times replicating than a thousand over replication. So just consider that as well when you start to read articles and um, blogs and you um, listen to the news, etc. Talk about also, not only about the allergies, but sometimes what's in it. Um, formaldehyde. Yes, formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is in a lot of the vaccines. Um, another thing is in the vaccines is called bovine albumin. And bovine the albumin is actually a extraction of a calf, a fetus, um, within the mom. So the story goes that the cow lives its life, giving us cereal, yada, yada, yada. Not cereal, but milk to go in our cereal. Um, yogurts, cheeses, whatever, you know, we use milk for. Um and when it's time for them to go to the slaughterhouse, whether it's time for them to become something that we're going to eat or, um, you know, they're just old, they're sick, whatever the issue is. And the farmer finds out that, oh my gosh, um, this cow is actually pregnant. So they say they, they're going to kill the cow anyway. And so don't ask me about what they do with the fetus. Please don't ask me that. Look it up. Maybe you'll find an answer. But I know they do extract blood from the fetus and anybody who is pregnant or knows somebody who's pregnant or just watch all the pregnancy things or just end the pregnancy period um you know that um the uterine area where the baby is formulating is very potent with a lot of nutrients from the placenta to the umbilical cord etc so that's used in a lot of medicines like um, insulin is one of the medications and it's also used in vaccines as well. Now this doesn't mean, okay, we'll stop taking your insulin because you're a vegan, yada, yada, yada. I get it. If you are a vegan and you are taking insulin, I do not want you to stop taking it because you feel guilty or something, all right? Um, some vaccines are starting to come out where they don't have some of these products in them it's hard to find but um, there are companies out there that's making products um, that doesn't have um, egg protein or any kind of egg extract or fetal extract um, also what's in some vaccines is human blood um, yes I did say human blood um, the virus also can be extracted from a human as well 
and also from an animal um, and used to test and to come up with vaccines, etc., etc. So as you can see, animals are still being used for a lot of the medications and vaccines, as well as some vaccines do have um, human blood in them. Um, I don't know all of them, but just the fact that I know one or two is enough for me. Okay. <laughs> so um, I did talk about uh, ovalbumin, which is another name um, that means um, egg, you know, extract, whether it's um, from the white outer part, sac, or whether it's the actual milk. Another topic I want to talk about is people are like questioning animals having COVID. You know, a lot of y'all have loved ones as pets and family members as pets and children as pets, but that shouldn't be so surprising. And now it shouldn't even be a wonder or reason why, because pets are being tested and pets can be, I shouldn't say pets, but animals are being tested and animals are being treated for COVID. However, not all animals. It has to be like specialty kind of animals like zoo animals or um, if it's like a big rancher um, and he produces a certain percentage of our meat supply and 10 of his cows has signs and symptoms, whatever that is for a cow of COVID, that they could actually get the, the cow tested and treated. So, of course, you know, animal products are a big, huge part of manufacturing. I don't care if it's down to just eating jello. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Some of them, they're still, they're still out there, you know? So, it wouldn't be surprising to me to find out. And, of course, um, pet food have a lot of byproducts from animals, you know? That's pretty much the only way some of them will eat. You know, you give them something dry, they look at you and plant-based, they're like, no, 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 no. Just because I live in this house with free heat, Wi-Fi, three beds. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just be, just because, just because, you know, they like that wet food and, you know, so, um, but of course, even the dry food is in there too, all the treats and all that stuff that, you know, they love to eat. So don't be surprised if, yeah, cats, dogs, um, other animals, people are now getting it in their food. Um, it's seeping, the, the, the dun is going to the dun beetles and they're rolling in their ball and they're eating it. And when they have an attack, it gets to this. So, yeah, I'm just going on and on and on. But you get what I'm saying, how one thing can lead to the other, can lead to the other. So don't get shocked and surprised about it. Um, so that's probably going to be another reason as well is why they're going to tell you or suggest that you get the COVID in the future is because now the food, the animals, etc. Um, COVID also might be forced to even work to get a job. Like, okay, you can't come back to work unless you get tested and you get the virus, especially the essential workers for sure, for sure. Um, pregnant women will be in the at-risk group. Right now, they're trying to make sense of it all, but I'm given 20, I'm given by summer 2021, you know, that they're going to be putting women and children as, okay, right under the elderly type thing, you know? So be prepared for that. Um, and right now it seems, uh, volunteer, but not really because a lot of people will have to get it anyway, like doctors, nurses, or they're going to lose their job or they can do telemed. But who knows what's going to come with that stipulation as well. So, but I'm just giving you something to look out for and to be prepared for. So that doesn't throw you in another tinsy. Like, oh my gosh, I didn't see this coming. Why? Right. Um, also, we did talk about the FDA already. But a lot of viruses based on the history have been messed up due to human error i mean we are human i mean look at yourself look around you right here person over there on the couch tell me how many mistakes they don't make even when they perfect at something somebody can find a mistake in it or they can find a mistake in it but there's always some kind of mistakes oops happening 
Um, some time ago, uh, a manufacturing company had shipped thousands of live polio vaccines. And there was a lot of kids, like, kids died. Like, it was just, like, crazy. Um, kids were paralyzed because of human error. Somebody shipped the wrong, no, John, you're not supposed to send the red one. You're supposed to send the white one. John doesn't send the red one, you know. It just messed up kids dying and a lot of people being paralyzed. Human error. I mean, it was some good intentions to save people from, you know, but you see what happened. An early batch of the measles actually caused a lot of kids to get the measles. So that 20 time fold instead of a thousand time fold, well, whatever that fold was, maybe, you know, the dose was amped up more than the 20 times replicated type thing. But a lot of kids got the measles. So it wasn't like a simple okay, let me just, it's just a small outbreak or you're just getting some of the symptoms, you know, like a runny nose or fever, but nothing serious. But this was actually serious. In 2017, there was a fever called Dengu fever. And that fever um, had a vaccine, vaccine and caused people who got the vaccine to get the worst case of this Dengu fever. So that's another example that happened in 2017. Also the swine flu, if I remember the swine flu, the swine flu um, vaccine caused um, people to get an immune disorder that actually attacks the nerve. <sighs> you see what I'm saying here? In 2013, uh, the HPV vaccination had glass particles in it. Yup. Mm -hmm. glass particles and um was that 2019 or was it 17 2017 um in 2017 uh, one of the flu vaccinations had um some type of bacteria in it and they had to pull back like 1.2 million vials of it once again the human error <laughs> once again the human error once again, the human error. So basically, if it's a live vaccine, then no, it's not recommended that pregnant women take it. And of course, that's the chicken pox, some of the flus, MMRs, yellow fever, HPV. Um, now I'm going to add to the list COVID-19. And not just because of that, because of the weakened virus, but also, there's no studies showing if it's safe for the baby in utero, if it's safe for the mom, what are the long-term effects, if any. Um, also, when it comes to breastfeeding, there is no data. Um, is it safe for a baby? Is it safe for a mom? Yada, 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 yada. So I figure in about a good 20 years, <laughs> we'll probably get a good idea about its effects now. But for something that just came over in America, where everybody started to realize in America in March, even though it's been, you know, in other countries prior, but um, that's too, it's like December. That's not enough, that's not enough time to even get the, not only make it, but then test it and do the results and all that. Okay, so just be patient. Um, weigh your thoughts and your feelings. Do not let fear um, get a hold of you. You know what? I have a homework assignment. Go ask somebody like a baby boomer to see their um, shots from when they were little or when they was in the service oh, or the military. They look like bullet wounds, like straight bullet wounds. And, you know, now they have you know, high in, in Alzheimer's, high in dementia, high in arthritis, high in strokes, high in gout, high in heart attacks. It's like, could it be? And then how come there is a generation also that has umbilical cord hernias, baby born with umbilical hernias, meaning hernias around the navel area. <clears throat> could it be something that, you know, uh, mom uh, vaccination or dad vaccination. Okay, it could be the food, it could be the water. I mean, 
it goes on and on of what it could be, but something, something right. And then you're going to inject it in the body so the body can adjust and remember it. But at the same time, there's a paragraph of ingredients. <laughs> it just can't work for everybody now. It's too many of us out here for this thing to work for everybody and not, you know, so uh, be very mindful of that as well. Um, take heed. Question, why is it that you can test positive for COVID-19, go home, Netflix and chill, you know, no symptoms, you're good, you know, and 14 days later, you get tested, it's negative, you can go back to work, six feet apart, of course, you know, um, go to the store, um, mix and mingle, as long as it has a certain number, 50 people or less or something like that, you know, go out to restaurants and live your life. Right. Or you can test positive COVID-19 and um, you get flu like symptoms. You know, you're having the chills, the fevers, the runny noses, congestion, sore throat, aches and pains, yada, yada, yada. Right. So you vixing it up, you sweating it out, you using something that you found on the Internet that everybody says works and you're detoxing and you probably sage in your house and all this other kind of stuff, whatever you, you, you doing, right? 14 days go by, you back at work, right? You test negative for, for COVID, you're still hanging around at work, you're still at Target and Walmart, you still, you know, and getting your Popeye's chicken, you still at the gas station, touching the gas handles, you're still putting your credit card, touching all the stuff. So you still back in society again because, right, your body fights this virus, 99.75, I'm going to round it up to 76% effective of curing you, whether you show his symptoms or not, right? And then, well, let's get into to, to, to that because your lymphatic system is gangster, straight gangster. What it does is like if you went to war or armies or uh, uh, the mafia or the cartels or the government or whatever, you think they, the, the lymphatic system, these people that I just mentioned ain't got nothing in the lymphatic system. They're the bomb. They got a lineup. They know who going to fight first, who's second in command, who third, what do what, what's the game plan. You got actual killer cells, killer T cells, or their only job is just to freaking kill you. You know, you got other cells. Their only job is just to just smother you up and suffocate you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you got some over there that's like, you know, one of the best bloggers out there. You know, they be, they get checked all the tea. They got all the receipts. They're taking pics. They got the license plate number. They got your drive. They got your social security number. They got all your family information, your mama. They got grave sites where everybody goes. They got everything about you. Your baby mama. They know all, and they got receipts to back it up. They got video. They're like, yeah, you come around here again. We know where you live. We know what you look like. We know what kind of car. We know your eye color. We got your DNA. We got a stack of your hair. We know you. So if you come around again, Oh, we're going to tack on an instant. You think Superman went at a speed of like, oh, huh, lymphatic system. No, nothing could beat the lymphatic system down here. I'm telling you, off the chain. So, so big up to the lymphatic system. So let them do their thing. And if you get it again, you ain't, you probably won't even get no system, symptoms because they already know what that is. And even if it changes viruses, let's say, or strands because you traveled or whatever, it's still job primary mission the only reason why it's here is to protect you period naturally not forcefully naturally now you got to help it out of course by resting hydrating yourself and all that stuff stuff that works for you and makes you your best you right but then you got the SARS COVID um, vaccine and you know they saying 94 percent effective right now 95 percent is like the big number because you got a lot of companies all over the world like yeah we had 95 percent we had 95 percent you know and just recently like this week i'm seeing like 96 percent so they like all happy like okay we had 96 but the question is is like it still does not beat what your body can do at 99.7 six percent so why are you pushing this vaccine so hard like like hard
hard, hard, hard. You can't even turn on TV. You can't even turn on the radio without hearing commercials and stuff. You can't even turn on satellite radio just to forget the commercials because they're going to drop some line. You can't even go on social media just to like your grandmother's page or something like that without something coming up. You can't even watch YouTube without a banner all over the place. Click here for that. This, that. I'm like... But, of course, the psychology of it all is if you feed it enough, if you push it enough, eventually, especially behind fear, if you don't get this, you're going to die. Okay. But Sally's back at work and she had COVID and she looked totally fine to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so people having thoughts, but yet pushing, 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 pushing. When you know or they know that 99.75%, 6% chance that you're going to be all right. Your body can do it. Now, that's where the other scientists are coming in and say, okay, well, what about people who have low immune systems? What about them? Not the ones who got who could fight it off good, but the ones who have low. But yet, you got people that's in first responders who's going to have to take it. Um, um, they, I'm sh- they're going to put pregnant women and children by next summer on the list as the people should take it. Maybe they'll put like from first grade or something like that. Because it may be too soon to do babies and stuff. However, I wouldn't put it past them to just do it um, more often to babies, to to toddlers, you know, and not wait until they get like in first grade and, you know, a little older. So um, be prepared and ready for that. Here's some homework. This is funny. Well, it's not funny, but ask somebody who's a baby boomer just say let me see your shots do you have any shot marks yes yeah, i said marks they look like bullet wounds like straight bullet wounds and it's like oh my gosh what did they put in you you know what i mean why is it that big why you still have it because you know um my generation and younger we can't even see we can remember of course because all those dreaded sweaty palms and oh mom please no don't take me to this because we probably remember that since birth since they first shot us like oh i'm gonna remember you oh no anything with a white coat oh no <laughs> Shoot. that's why we always cry you ever notice babies they little babies and they cry they fine but they be knowing when they go to the doctor <laughs> she be like how they know it's a horror around that but anyway so Look at these shots and then look at what they're going through now. A lot of Alzheimer's, dementia, um, um, arthritis, heart attacks, heart strokes, heart failures, you know, uh, prostate cancers, you know, all those type of things just kind of hovering, gout, hovering at massive amounts. And it's like, okay, well, you got to consider it. You can't just say, is it the food? Is it the water? Is the air? I throw in a vaccine too. Throw it right on in there too. If you're going to talk about the land, earth, air, all that, and they went to war and all, no, throw, let's throw some vaccines in there too, you know, because like I said, one size don't fit all, you know, and right. So I hope you got something from this today. Um, Thank you for joining me. I had um, a little difficulty with my computer memory. So, oh, geez, now they're saying my battery. You know, it's just best to just vent it out and not keep it in because keep it in is just only going to stress all your lymphatic system out. And you know, I just told you th- those, those your dogs right there, those are your buddies. All right. So don't stress out. That's another way you can help me. Video, out. please like and subscribe below. Um, I would love for you to comment on your thoughts and your feelings. Um, and it's okay. You know what I mean? Just take your time with it. That's all I'm saying. Don't rush. Just because somebody jumps off cliffs don't mean, I said somebody, just because someone jumps off a cliff does not mean that you have to jump off. Just because a whole bunch of people jump off a cliff don't mean you got to jump off. You know, sometimes you got to test the air, you know, you got to test the air, you know, check the weather, you got to measure the height, you know, you got to make sure that you got the right outfit on, you know, should I get a helmet, a parachute just in case, you know, maybe I need a bottle of water just because I get down and get dehydrated, I mean, you know, you got, you got, got to think about these things, not like, woohoo, you know, let me just go in, especially when it comes to your health and the future of your health, and especially when you're pregnant, and the future of your baby, you know? So like I said, we're really not going to know nothing really until like another 20 years. It's going to start coming out. 
it's going to start coming out slowly but surely, you know, thank goodness to the internet and social media. If, you know, it's not controlled as much, it's going to start coming out. But to get a whole perspective of it, I'll give it about 20 years or so. And, and we'll, we'll really, really know. Okay, that's all I got to say for now. So I will talk to you later. Have a wonderful day. Manifest birth. Manifest life.